example from a UK retailer called Halfords who sells um, bicycles strangely enough and what they've been really investing in um, content to help all these people who suddenly started biking to do it safely and to find Halfords as the helpful hand who they who they could hand hold it as they go through this new cycling process cycling to school six tips to make it safer pretty obvious piece of blog content to have out there you've got to have that if you're trying to sell more bikes at the moment but I know a lot of you struggle to work out what content to do and I was talking to the social media manager of made.com yesterday now made is uh, one of the most popular furniture manufacturers in the UK really clever business D2C model um, beautiful product and they're really one to watch here in the UK and they have completely restructured their social content plans um, during the lockdown period to make sure that they're giving customers more content and less sales messages. But also they've been asking them via Instagram, what questions are they struggling with with interiors at the moment? And they've taken those answers and that has become their content plan. So ask your customers what content they want and then create it. And of course, this great content is going to help you get new customers as well as help you retain the repeat ones. Then also on the content thing. So we've talked about giving the great experience. We've talked about creating content to help the customers understand that you know what they want, that you are experts in your space with the bike content, with the made.com content. That is really important to be building this relationship with these customers. But if you really, really, really want to create a great, great relationship, you've got to put more emotion into it. You've got to remove the wall that sits between you and your customers. You've got to become more human. That for me, you can do it in so many ways, but that for me starts with kind of the about us page on the website, which yes, you should be using across your other channels. Um, and the best explanation I've come across this this year is the brilliant JJ Resnick. Um, he came on the podcast, you can listen to him in episode 258. Um, and he came on and talked about story because he's built three, four, seven figure e-commerce businesses almost entirely by focusing on this story. One of them is the Moscow Copper Company, as you can see there, but I really wanna focus on that story and how he breaks it down. So he focuses the story on three key parts. One, the problem, two, the solution to the problem, and then three, the success. And if you can explain that from your, your business story right the way through to each individual product, you're really gonna get that connection going with the customers. So I wanna show you my favorite ever About Us page. This is a brilliant one, absolutely brilliant. Um, I love it to pieces. And I've put in the problem solution to the problem success down the side there. So this is a business called Farm Toys Online who sell farm toys. And this About Us page both explains why, um, why they created the, the company, but it also explains how Julia is exactly the same as her customer base. And if you can create that, they will be with you forever. So it talks about her three children and how they all liked different types of farm toys and how it was a nightmare to buy farm toys, exactly mirroring the experience of her customers. So that's the problem, solution to the problem. She created the website, that was her solution, but of course for her customers, she created the website. So it really nicely mirrors. And then we go into the success where they talk about how they're bigger and better than ever. They talk about how they're looking after the customers. They're talking about how they love running the business and they've included a picture. So please, if your About Us page only has your contact details, you really need to up your game. And once you've done it, then include that in your welcome campaigns, in your post-purchase email sequences, across your social media. The more you reveal the humans behind your business, the why behind your business, the greater the emotional connection you'll build with those repeat customers and your brand new customers, which will then enable you to leverage those people, those, those repeat customers, those people who bought from you, and to turn them into people who will send you referrals and people who will bring you further sales in the future. Because what you really want is you want those customers to love you so much that when they sit down with their friends over a cup of coffee, they are talking about you. And if you've got customers who will do that, then you can use them as the basis of your nano influencer campaign, the basis of your outreach, and they'll create great testimonials that you'll be able to use across all your channels as social proof. So there we go. There's my kind of whistle stop tour to right now in 2020, what I believe you should be focusing on to get more traffic, the traffic that's actually going to buy to your website this year and beyond. And to give you a very quick summary of all of that, um, 
there's the three core things you need, three core approaches you need to take. You want to keep optimizing. So frequently review, analyze, and adapt, and make your system streamlined to make that easy. Secondly, have that levers plan. You can probably write it off the top of your head, but if it's written down, then you're not gonna forget something in the, in the heat of the moment, and make sure it's granular. So it's not just do more Google Ads, it's what you're gonna do in Google Ads to bring in more traffic or to bring in less traffic. And do that marketing method by marketing method. And then the third one was to avoid bright, shiny objects. So stay focused, remember what you're trying to achieve. Look at that customer master plan model and go, actually, where is my time best being spent? What's the best way I can improve performance on each of these stages? And then I went into a couple of tips around how you can create that amazing future performance. So give your customers a great experience. Marketing can help a lot with this, as can working with the teams throughout the business. Um, get your customers to talk about you um, and build that connection. Who are you? How can you help? Starts with the About Us page. Now, if you've got any questions for me, I've seen things flying up there in the chat and I will, uh, I'll try and take a look at those straight afterwards, but please do feel free to drop me an email. I'm on chloe at ecommercemasterplan.com if you've got any questions. Um, right now in the UK, it's nearly 6 p.m., so I'm probably going to log off fairly shortly, but I will do my best to get back to you tomorrow with answers. Awesome. Love it, Chloe. Thank you so much. And yeah, I was also throwing links to the podcast in here, guys. If you um, haven't subscribed already, uh, you can head to our site and then you'll find the link straight to the podcast. What episode number did you say it was, Chloe, um, with that, the person on storytelling? For JJ, it's 258. 258. Okay. All right. We'll also link to that uh, in the show notes and down below. And if you guys aren't following along in the show notes, I have plugged them. They're somewhere here in the chat line. I'll, I'll, let me just share it one more time. This will be the best way to take some of what Chloe just said and actually execute on it in the near uh, future. So Chloe, we'll let you go. You've had a long day. Thanks so much for joining us here at the beginning of our day two of the event. Um, and that, that was wonderful. Thanks. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for letting me be part of the event. And everyone, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah. Awesome.